Hello and welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark The Sim Hanger for all things Flight Sim related. In this video I'll share with you the steps and actions that I took to achieve what I believe is a good VR performance and hopefully it'll be of some use to those watching. One of the big challenges with a video of this type of course is there is a vast array of different CPUs, graphics cards and headsets. And as pointed out in my earlier video on VR, I'll leave links in the notes below, I can't tell you exactly what settings are best for you but what I can do is provide a guide and highlight those items that may have an impact on your performance in VR. The flight you're watching right now was the one I used in all my tests. I'm in the Beechcraft Bonanza G36 with the G1000 panels. I started on the runway, engines running from Meg's Field. And that is the Pro Edition add-on from Z Design Studios. After departure, I then bank left and fly over the center of Chicago with photogrammetry on. It's half past nine in the morning, so I'm getting a good shadow cast. And as you can see, I've got scattered clouds. There's plenty of water in the vicinity and I can test reflections as well. So it's a bit of a stress test. The idea being if I can fly and get good performance in this area with these settings, then I can fly just about anywhere. I don't want to have to keep going back and changing settings depending on the area that I'm flying in. In other words, I really just want to set it and forget it. I want to spend my time flying and enjoying the sim and not with my head buried in various settings. For all my tests, I'm using the HP Reverb Pro. And as the specifications are more or less the same as the G2, it will cover that headset as well. The principal difference being that the G2 has more cameras and much improved lenses. VR performance should be much the same. And of course it will be applicable to one degree or another for any of the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. So I'm using Microsoft's Windows Mixed Reality Portal as well as the latest OpenXR Runtime. So in this video we're going to be exploring our options in Windows 10, NVIDIA Drivers, OpenXR, Windows Mixed Reality Portal and in-game. So for Steam and Oculus users hopefully there's something here for you as well. For all users I would recommend a visit to the Microsoft Flight Simulator forum. There's a huge amount of help and advice there. To find it, go to the Microsoft Flight Simulator forum and then Virtual Reality. For Steam users, there's a gentleman there called Captain Lucky. Appears to be very knowledgeable and helpful, worth a read. For Oculus users, I'd also recommend checking out VR Flight Sim Guy's channel. I'll leave links in the notes below and there's a wealth of advice and help there. Once I had achieved what I felt was an acceptable level of performance, I then jumped into the Airbus 320. I'm not a big airliner guy, but I do like to have the medium hauls from time to time. And it was important that my settings were suitable for airliners as well. The only thing I haven't tested is at high altitude. So before we jump into the settings, there's a couple of things I'd just like to mention. I have found in Sim that 30 frames per second for both VR and for 2D gives me a smooth performance. So that was my target in both instances. I still experienced the occasional micro pause, but they were infrequent. Any stuttering that you may see in the flights is because I'm recording. And the hit on frame rates when recording is between 3 and 6 frames per second. It's quite heavy. I'm using the NVIDIA screen capture to record the flights. And for reasons that are beyond me, it does seem to stutter more recently. In the headset, my experience was super smooth all the way, with no black flickering borders when I turn my head in the headset. And lastly, to get a good performance in VR, you are going to have to invest some time, trial and error in terms of setting. There's no quick fix, no universal solution. What works for me may not work for you. I'm very happy with the performance that I've achieved. Let's now run through the steps of how I got there. VR needs a lot of grunt. Let's make sure our PC is up to the task. Right click on the desktop and choose display settings. From the left hand menu, choose power and sleep to take us to our power management settings. Once we're in that sub-menu, then on the right-hand side, click on Additional Power Settings. And here we'll be able to choose a power plan. Then on the left-hand side, choose Create a Power Plan. 
And here you're presented with three options. We're looking for high performance. We don't want the computer saving energy by throttling back the computer. You have the option to give the power plan a name if you want. I've already got one set up, so I'm not going to bother with that. Click next, it'll give you an option in terms of hard disk performance, and then create and you're done. We're in high performance mode. We're back on the desktop and from the taskbar, choose the search icon and type in game mode. Game mode settings will pop up, click on that. Game mode is a Microsoft enhancement that will optimize your PC when playing games or running full screen applications. I've tried it both on and off. My recommendation is to have game mode off. With game mode on, I found the frames per second were inconsistent. I had much bigger peaks and troughs, so making it very difficult to get consistent performance. You should try both settings. Bear in mind, you'll need to exit the sim for it to take effect. For some configurations, this may work, but for me, it's definitely off. But we're not quite done here. At the top on the right hand side is graphic settings. Click on that. This will present us with two options. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, designed to reduce latency and improve performance, and graphics performance preference. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling sounds ideal for flight sim but it absolutely did not work for me. I strongly recommend that this is turned off. Here are my results and they're fairly dramatic. And if I recall correctly, I think that this is on by default. It's also worth checking on this setting from time to time when you have update, as it could revert back to on and potentially have a huge impact on performance. And my thanks and acknowledgement to YouTuber Overkill for bringing this to my attention. Moving on to the second option, graphics performance preference. And as we saw earlier, this seems to be between battery life and better higher performance. It says choose an app to set preference, choose Microsoft Store app, and then select Microsoft Flight Simulator from the list. Once you've selected that, you can choose add, and we see Microsoft Flight Simulator added there. We're not gonna let Windows decide. We're gonna click on options and choose high performance and save. This is probably aimed at laptop users, and I saw no decline once I had this enabled. It's not a game changer, but for me, better on than off. As they say, every little helps. It would appear there's inconsistency in terms of the performance of the NVIDIA drivers. Best performance seems to vary depending on whether you've got a 10, 20 or 30 series NVIDIA graphics card. And from feedback on the Microsoft Flight Simulator forum, it appears Steam users are having more of a problem than others. I personally haven't had any major driver problems, but the general consensus on the forums is reinstall driver 457.30 directly from the NVIDIA website. To manage my NVIDIA drivers, I use GeForce Experience, and I'm using updated drivers bar one. And the only reason I'm not using the updated one is it conflicts with my video editing software. If you use GeForce Experience, you can see which is your current driver by looking in the settings. Click on the small cog. I've not experienced any major problems with the NVIDIA drivers, but maybe that's because I've got a 2080 graphics card. When you do install new drivers, I'd like to suggest that you follow this procedure. Click on the custom installation and not the express installation the Express will overwrite your current graphic card settings. Once it's finished preparing to install, you'll get an option to perform a clean installation. And I would recommend that you click that box. This will clean out the old driver and references to it and install the new one. Again, it's just a safety precaution to prevent any possible issues. Back to the GeForce Experience homepage and let's click on Home. You're likely to find Microsoft Flight Simulator listed there and if you click on Details, it'll bring up a list of the 2D settings within Microsoft Flight Simulator, as well as a list of optimal settings. Click on the little spanner on the right hand side and you'll see this display. Note these settings are for a monitor and not for VR. Just a note that the recommended or optimal settings are ridiculously low. Don't use them. But what may be interesting is as you move the bar along, so the settings will change under the heading of custom. And it's quite interesting to see the relationship between the different settings as you move up. Anyway, that was more for interest than anything else. Let's move on. 
Right click on your desktop and choose NVIDIA Control Panel. Once we're in the Control Panel we want to choose Manage 3D Settings. Click on that. In the main window you are presented with two tabs, Global Settings and Program Settings. These settings define the way the graphics card processes the display information. We're interested in program settings, so click on that. And it's here that we're able to set different parameters for different programs. Click on select a program to customize and pick Microsoft Flight Simulator. If it's not there, you've got the option to add it. Once Microsoft Flight Simulator is selected, scroll down and choose Power Management Mode. This is likely to be set to the default setting. Change it to Prefer Maximum Performance. The second setting that we want to adjust is Texture Filtering Quality and that will be set to Quality. Change that to High Performance. For those with 30 series graphics cards, 3080 and 3090s, they're probably going to be happy with Quality. But for the rest of us, High Performance is a recommended setting. An optional third category you could look at is virtual pre-rendered frames. It's set to 1 by default. I've left mine at default. But some people have reported setting it to 2 and getting a better performance. I've not experienced that myself. Once that's done, click apply and we're done. From the bottom left hand corner click on the start menu then choose the cog to go to settings and you'll be presented with this menu selection. Click on mix reality and then select headset display to bring up the options for our VR headset. There are a number of options here that we can change the parameters. The first one is visual quality. By default it will be set to let windows decide. Not sure this affects just the portal view so I set it to high. I set the app resolution to 720p as it will take less processing power than the 1080 option. But the main setting and most important one is the experience option. I've now brought up the portal and we're looking at Microsoft Home. And the default setting is either let Windows decide or best visual quality. We'll want to change that. It's currently set to best visual quality. On the portal view, which is what we can see in the headset, let's go down to the bottom right hand corner. And by clicking on this icon it brings up the VR view or app window or for Steam users the mirror. And this is a view a lot of content creators use to create video. But that's an extra window running and we don't want that. So change it to optimize for performance. And not only does it turn off the mirror but it turns off the Microsoft Home as well. By doing this we're eliminating the possibility of having the VR mirror running in the background. You also have the option to adjust between 90 and 60 Hz. The options here may vary depending on which headset you're using. And you can also change your IPD, which is software controlled on the HP Reverb Pro. It's a manual control on the G2. That's all we need to do here, let's move on. A number of my subscribers have queried whether or not the OpenXR developer tools are required for VR. Just to clarify any misunderstanding. The Windows Mixed Reality software that you use already contains OpenXR. That's all you need to run VR. However, the download OpenXR development tools for Windows Mixed Reality will provide you with the most recent edition of OpenXR and provides a set of tools that will allow you to change a number of parameters within OpenXR. And for my part, I would consider it an essential download. And we'll have a look at the detail now. Once downloaded, open the application and go to the third tab, Developer Settings. The first option should be clicked to On to use the latest preview OpenXR runtime. Just below that, there is a tick box Custom Render Scale. And if you click that, it will open up a slider bar that will allow you to adjust the render scale from 50% through to 400%. Adjusting the scale has an immediate impact on visual quality and performance within the sim. By default, it's set to 100%. If you leave the box unticked, it'll be at 100%. The option currently highlighted is Motion Reprojection and you have three options, Disabled, Automatic and Always On. Motion Reprojection has a number of names, Asynchronous Time Warp, Asynchronous Reprojection. In essence, it's a method of creating additional frames on the fly so that VR headsets can reach a reasonable frame rate so that it's not stuttery and jerking, which can invoke motion sickness as well as poor performance. The settings I settled on are those shown now. I've got the latest preview on 
custom render scale not ticked and motion reprojection disabled. I spent about three days testing out various different settings and options with both OpenXR and Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm not aware of any way to accurately measure the frames per second in VR. So the results that I'll share with you shortly are subjective rather than purely objective. But flying in VR is very subjective in itself. It's about the smoothness, the look and the feel while you fly. The actual frames per second is irrelevant to some degree. However, whilst flying, I did continually check what the frames per second were and I found I had to achieve about 30 frames per second to get a smooth and good performance in this test setup. And it's worthwhile repeating that these are the results for my system, an 8700K and a 2080Ti. Depending on your system, your results will vary. And the purpose of this video is not to copy my settings, but more to highlight the process and steps that may help you improve the VR performance with your system. So here are my opinions on the various settings that I tried out. A quick explanation, repo stands for motion reprojection, whether it was on or off. Under stutter, I included black borders being visible when you turn your head in the headset, as well as any tearing and juddering. M pause is micro pause, and I believe the rest is self-explanatory. I very quickly established that with the reprojection on to always and also automatic, I was getting a poorer performance. So I switched that off for most of the tests. My tests included varying the OpenXR slider render scale with Microsoft Flight Simulator render being set at 100 and then I did it in reverse with OpenXR being set at 100 and varying the Microsoft Flight Simulator render. Perhaps you would expect the results to be the same but they weren't. Keeping the OpenXR render at default 100 and varying the Microsoft render scale gave me slightly better performance and I'd estimated at about 10%. I finally plumbed for the settings highlighted above. Setting the render scale in Microsoft Flight Simulator to 70 is not a big penalty. You do get a little bit of ghosting from time to time, but it's nominal. And doing a guesstimate on the frames per second, I think I'm around 32. The first step I took was in 2D mode or flying on the monitor and adjusting my settings so that I was getting a regular 30 frames per second. This gave me an idea of what my system was capable of, knowing full well that my VR settings would need to be lower than that. This brings us to the question of what settings do we adjust? There's an article on the Microsoft Flight Simulator forums from Asmidi, VR Bang for Buck Performance Guide. And although it's not designed specifically for VR, the basic principles and those items that have the biggest impact on performance remain unchanged. I'll leave links in the notes below. It's a recommended read. In adjusting my settings, I was guided by as MIDI, and in particular by those items highlighted above, but also include terrain or object level of detail. But for me in VR, the big issue was render scaling, and volumetric clouds. I found if they were too high, you're gonna to struggle to get consistency. And it is a matter of trial and error to find the right balance. So these are the final settings for VR that I settled on. I was able to keep most of my settings on high or medium. With my render scaling set at 70%, and my volumetric clouds on medium. If you're a regular airline pilot, well, perhaps you would want the volumetric clouds on high and make other compromises elsewhere. It'll be different for each pilot. Well, if you've managed to stick with me this far, well done. And I hope that this has been of some help to you in getting the right VR performance for your system. The reality of the situation is Microsoft Flight Simulator remains constrained and restricted by its limited core utilization. Something Asobo have said that they're working on to improve. And I think at this time it would be fair to say that Asobo appear committed to bringing future development and improvements to the sim. And that development alone will give a huge boost to performance all round. Thank you very much for joining me today. Stay safe everybody, see you soon and bye for now.